and cold. All right, in the uh, folder for this week, down toward the bottom, there are uh, three documents. One of them says Honors Chemistry Unit 8 Test Review. Uh, two papers picked up. One of them, it says Unit 9, and that's only because it was the old Unit 9. Don't worry, it says Unit 9. That doesn't make any difference. It's not the wrong one. So uh, this, this is like a test review. And what I want you to do is work on this for uh, about a half an hour. So then at 9 o'clock, we'll go over all the parts of it. It's a review of all the topics that we've gone over with uh, uh, gases, like with the ideal gas law right here, the idea about partial pressure, the combined gas law, the conversion factors are on here for uh, converting from pressures in atmosphere into kilopascal and millimeters of mercury, the ideal gas constants in uh, both liter atmosphere, liter kilopascal, liter millimeter of mercury, and then there's a bunch of problems. So there's like, uh, you know, 10 different problems. And they're very much like the same kind of problems that you would expect to see uh, on the test. And we'll go over these in about a half an hour. The other things that are in the folder are, the second paper says like more gas law test review. It's like they're extra problems. That paper is here. So if you're remote or you're absent, the extra gas law review problems are uh, additional problems, same sort of thing using using gas laws. So this document is blank, so it's more gas law test review. But also in that folder, there are the answers to the extra gas law review. So this is extra gas law review. It's a PDF with, uh, they're just handwritten answers to those problems. Like this, where'd it go? Here we go. So these are like handwritten answers to those kind of problems. Okay, uh, let's see. So if you're remote, um, you can work on these test review problems and you guys just like work on them. You just need a calculator. You don't need a, you don't need a periodic table because it's all just, uh, uh, just, just problems with gas laws themselves. We're gonna integrate work with gases into stoichiometry like in the next unit. So don't worry about that. Anyway, uh, let's see more. All right, so uh, I'll just kind of write through some of the answers here. In the first one, pressure is 2.09 atmosphere. The volume is 165 milliliters. And the gas is compressed down to some new volume. So like V2 is 90.4 milliliters. There's no change in temperature, so what's the new pressure? So that's just a Boyle's Law problem from P1, V1 equals P2, V2. We're trying to find the new pressure, P2. That's P1, V1 over V2. So 2.09 atmospheres times 165 milliliters over 90.4 milliliters. Comes out to be, let's see, three significant figures. 3.81 atmospheres. The volumes can be anything so long as they match. So as long as they're both in milliliters, that's okay. They'll cancel out. If you were to convert them both into liters, you'd still get the same answer. 3.81 atmosphere. You also know the pressure has got to go up because if you're decreasing the volume, squeezing the gas, the pressure has to be higher. So that's how that one ought to go. Uh, and the second one, so sample of air, one liter, that's a volume at STP, that's standard temperature and pressure. So you know that the temperature has to be 273 Kelvin and the pressure is one atmosphere. We're gonna change two conditions. The volume is gonna expand to 1.50 liters. So V2, 1.50 liters. And the pressure is now 1.11 atmosphere. You're trying to figure out what the new temperature is. So there's two things that are going on. The uh, pressure increases, uh, and an increase in pressure would make an increase in temperature. But the volume expands, that would make the temperature go down. So you have two competing factors affecting the temperature. One factor makes the temperature want to go up, 
The other one makes the temperature want to go down. So anyway, the ideal gas or the combined gas law, P1 V1 over T1 is equal to P2 V2 over T2. You're trying to figure out the new temperature. So you're solving for T2. And T2 is going to be P2 V2 T1 over P1 V1. So you got a uh, 1.11 atmosphere and you got 1.50 liters and started out at 273 Kelvin. And the uh, starting pressure was one atmosphere and the starting volume was one liter. Comes out to be 455 Kelvin. So it seems like the increase in pressure causing an increase in temperature is a larger effect than, uh, oh, the volume goes up. So that would have to be an increase in temperature too. So yeah, there's two factors driving the temperature up. The increase in temperature causes both the volume to expand and the pressure to increase. So then you got some kind of CO2, 1.55 liters. So that's a starting volume, 1.55 liters. You should always remember that these temperatures in Celsius must be converted into Kelvin. So that's 295.2 Kelvin. It's critical that in any gas law, temperature is not in Celsius, but in, in Kelvin. So you just add 273 to this temperature and the starting temperature is then 295. Well, 295.2 Kelvin, it's okay. Cause it's actually 273.15. It doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. And the pressure is held constant. So there's no change in pressure. So you don't have to worry about the pressure at all. And the volume decreases to one liter. We're trying to figure out that new temperature. Uh, let's see. So in order for the volume to go down, the temperature has to also go down. So you can expect a smaller temperature. From You can start out with the combined gas law. And if the pressure stays the same, the P's just go away. Or what's true is V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. So the final temperature is equal to V2 T1 over V1. So you got, uh, oop, that's V2. One liter, 295.2 Kelvin, and 1.55 liters. So it's 190 Kelvin, what that ought to come out to be. So you had a Boyle's law, a combined gas, combined gas law, a Charles law, and then four is about just using the ideal gas law. So you got um, three and a half moles in the equation. That's n, three point five oh mole, and the volume is two liters. Temperature is thirty nine Celsius. You got to convert that into Kelvin. So thirty nine degrees Celsius plus two seventy three is, uh, let's see, 312 Kelvin. So the temperature is 312 Kelvin. And we want to know the pressure. From the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. I'm trying to figure out the pressure. So pressure is NRT over V. Number of moles, 3.50 moles. Now the value R, there's a couple different options. Uh, the different values for R uh, have different pressure units in them. So it turns out because the problem doesn't specify what the pressure unit has to be, it doesn't really make a difference which pressure unit you pick. Um, this is actually the most standard of them. So it really doesn't make a difference which one you chose. Anyone's gonna be all right. But if we do 8.31 liter kilopascal, 8.31 liter kilopascal per mole Kelvin. The temperature is 312 Kelvin. And the volume was uh, two liters. That'll come out to about 4540 kilopascal. If you used any other value for R, the other possible options are 44.8 atmospheres. If you use the value for R that's in atmospheres, or um, if you did it in millimeters of mercury, it'd be like 
3,400 or 34,100 millimeters of mercury. So one through four are a combination of the different kinds of gas laws, just taking what you know and figuring out what you got to figure out. Just do some algebra, stick in some numbers and get some answers. Uh, five is the thing about partial pressure. One of the things in this problem is you've got a mixture of units in atmospheres and kilopascals, and you can't be doing problems that have uh, dissimilar units. So a smart thing here is that pressure in atmospheres, you can convert that into kilopascal, or you can convert pressures in kilopascal into atmospheres, but I'd convert the one atmosphere in kilopascals, because then everything's just in kilopascals. You only have to do one conversion. One atmosphere is the same as 101.3 kilopascal. Uh, so it's around 105.4 kilopascal. The idea about partial pressure is that the total pressure in the gas, this is the pressure, the total pressure, 105.4 kilopascals, comes from the sum of the pressures of the individual gases that make up the mixture. So if you've got some kind of gas and there's a mix, it looks like we've got uh, 6.8 kilopascals of CO2. So that's a very small portion of it. Maybe this is like 6.8 atmospheres of CO2. We've got 20 kilopascal, oops, 6.8 kilopascal. Let's see, eraser, KPA. We got another uh, 20 kilopascal of uh, oxygen. So the remainder must be uh, the partial pressure from helium. There's a large portion of helium. So if you just take 105.4, minus 6.8, minus 20. Let's see. 105.4, minus 6.8, minus 20, 78.6. That's for the helium. So somewhere around there. Dalton's law, of par Dalton's law of partial pressure says the total pressure in a gas is just equal to the sum of the pressures of the individual gases. So in other words, if you were to evacuate this container of oxygen and helium, the remaining pressure would be just 6.8 kilopascal. If you were to evacuate the CO2 and helium, the remaining pressure would be 20 kilopascal. Or if you were to evacuate the oxygen and CO2, the remaining pressure would just be 78.6 kilopascal. But the total pressure in this gas of 104.5 comes from the pressures exerted by each of the individual gases, which are actually forces exerted on the exterior walls of the container. and uh, the helium has the greatest pressure because it must be in the greatest proportion, then oxygen, then the CO2. So that's not too bad. It's pretty simple. About diffusion, diffusion and effusion are dependent upon the formula masses of the gases. Nitrogen gas is N2, and that it's diatomic means you need to take the mass and multiply it by two. So it's around 28 uh, grams per mole. Carbon dioxide, CO2, when you add up the mass of a carbon and two oxygens, it's around 44 grams per mole. So nitrogen has a lower mass, which means it must also have a higher speed at any temperature. This is a relatively high speed gas, and this, the individual particles are moving slower. So if the gas is going to spread out into a room, it's dependent upon the speed of the particles, and nitrogen just simply has a uh, smaller mass, so those particles are moving faster, they diffuse through the room fat at a higher speed. So nitrogen gas is the gas that has a higher diffusion rate. Uh, seven is just regular conversion problems. Two atmospheres convert it into kilopascal. Every atmosphere is around 101.3 kilopascal. So that's 202.6. But we really only have like two significant figures. So it's like 200. The way to write 200 with two significant figures would be like that 200 and you underline that zero, which would otherwise be insignificant. Uh, 720 millimeters of mercury. So 760 millimeters of mercury is the same as one atmosphere. And then you can convert from atmosphere into kilopascal. And that comes out to be about 96 kilopascal. Alternatively, if you write 720 millimeters mercury, because all of those pressure units are all equivalent to an atmosphere, you can also just do it in one step. 
where 760 millimeters of mercury is the pressure that's the same as 101.3 kilopascal. It's the same math, you get the same answer, it's just one less step, because anytime you use a conversion factor, the numerator and denominator values, they're equal to each other. So, yeah, and the most common reason why gases are not considered ideal gases is if you're near the uh, evaporation or condensation point or near the triple point. Um, oops. Or like near the condensation point. In other words, whenever you have a gas, even if it's like boiling, where you have maybe like water as a liquid and water as a gas, there can be particles that move between the liquid and gas phase and gas and liquid phase. And it's in that phase transition that gases are less than ideal. In other words, they don't uh, behave according to the ideal gas law, especially if you actually get a change in phase. And the number of gas particles will change uh, effusion is usually when we describe the motion of gases through a pore. Oops. Through a pore or an opening. And diffusion is the regular mixture within a container. And it's true that low mass particles both effuse faster and diffuse faster. So for instance, if you have a, a barrier and it happens to have like holes in it, and you've got gas on one side, and you're trying to get that gas to go from one side to the other side, maybe like through the holes, smaller mass particles might not only fit through the holes better, but they're moving at a higher speed and have a higher collision rate, and they're more likely to make it through the hole. Similarly, if you have like a container, like maybe a room, and you've got some gas that's concentrated over one corner, eventually it'll spread throughout the, the room through diffusion, and the smaller gas particles are at any temperature, the faster they have to be moving and uh, the quicker they'll spread throughout the container itself. And then the last one about uh, relationships. Uh, the combined gas law is really like P1 V1 over T1 is equal to P2 V2 over T2. So you can look at relationships um, in terms of changes that take place with the ideal gas or combined gas law or the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, is probably the easier way to think about relationships. So relationships are direct. If one value goes up, the other value has to go up. Or if one value goes up, the other value has to go down. And relationships are inverse. If as one value increases, the other one has to drop down. So... Uh, Using the ideal gas law, if you look at the relationship between pressure and temperature, if you've got this algebraic equation, PV equals NRT, if the value for the pressure increases, then the temperature must also increase. So in order for the relationship or the uh, algebraic equation to be true, in other words, like if it's one times eight is equal to like one times two times four, well, if I change this value of P to a two, the value for a T must have to change to be eight so that the equation is true. In other words, increasing the pressure must increase the temperature. So the relationship between uh, pressure and temperature is a direct relationship. On the other hand, well, and temperature and volume. So temperature and volume must also be directly related. If you increase the volume, the temperature must also go up. Or you can also think about it as if you increase the temperature of a gas, the gas particles will move faster and it will expand. So increasing temperature also increases the volume. That's a direct relationship. Um, molar mass and speed. So, well, it's not, di it's directly related to the kinetic energy, but if the mass goes up, the speed goes down. That's an inverse relationship. And pressure and volume must also be inverse. So for instance, here, if, uh, if in this equation, let me erase this thing. If we say like pressure is one and volume's eight, number of moles is one, R is two and T is four, left-hand side equals eight, right-hand side equals eight. Well, what if I change the pressure to two 
the volume would have to change to four so that the left hand side of the equation is a constant value of eight. If you increase the pressure of the gas, it must be as a result of a decrease in volume if the temperature doesn't change. These are really just basic algebraic concepts. So if variables in a linear equation where there's no uh, divisor are on opposite sides of the equation, their direct relationships, if they happen to be on the same side of the equation, they'd have to be uh, inverse relationships. OK, so uh, these are always recorded and whatnot, and it's going to be online in just a few, like a few minutes, actually. The other set of problems that I gave you, the one that says like more gas law test review, uh, there's, so there's extra problems you can practice. The extra gas law review down toward the bottom. And there's answers for that at the very bottom of the folder for the week. So uh, if you have a calculator, bring a calculator with you tomorrow and uh, see how well you can do some gas law problems and we'll be done with the gas unit. Only a week and a half away till May. That's pretty hot. <laughs>